Leon, it's been six hours since our last transmission. I was starting to get worried. Don't you mean lonely? Anyway, I started to feel dizzy, and then I guess I must have lost consciousness. Few games can elicit the kind of rich passion, enthusiasm, and respect from game fans as the Resident Evil franchise. They're mainstays of the AAA gaming space, and they surmise some of the best of horror media, especially gaming. While everyone will have their favorite entry, it's hard to deny the sort of impact that Resident Evil 4 had on the entire games industry. Prior to Resident Evil 4 being this close to the action and having it operate and feel this good was simply unheard of. It inspired an entire generation of third-person action games and is still felt in modern game design today. In games such as The Last of Us, God of War, and my friend Peppa Pig. I realize the title of this video might seem a bit hyperbolic, and I get that. No one feature got me a college degree, progressed my faith, or made me pregnant. Well, maybe one thing almost did. Truthfully, I'm just someone who likes video games. I've played more than my fair share of them since I was a little kid, and just appreciate what they bring to the table, and how they inspire creativity and passion in others. So what exactly is the feature that inspired me so deeply that I felt compelled to make this video? I can say it's not the music, though that's pretty banging, and it's not the gameplay, which once adapted to still feels phenomenal and nuanced today. Truthfully, it's the elderly abuse. Few games let me feel the rich and raw sensation of taking grandma out to pasture like Resident Evil 4. I can't think of the last time sending an elderly woman flying filled me with such raw adrenaline and carnivorous gems. No, I'm, I'm not even kidding, it's, it's the gems. Let's rewind for a second. Resident Evil 4 was sort of a Hail Mary for Capcom. Following the financial failure, yet critical darling, that was the GameCube exclusive Resident Evil 1 remake, Capcom knew it needed to do something to keep Resident Evil as one of its top franchises. After a failed proof of concept by famed Twitter blocker and master of, uh, <laughs> master of, uh, <laughs> master famed game designer Hideki Kamiya. Shinji Mikami, the series creator, took reign over the fourth entry, inevitably leading to the game direction we know and love today. So that's all fine and good, but what does this have to do with da, 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 da. Just wait. Resident Evil is no stranger to using treasures in its gameplay. Whether it be medallions, golden arrows, emblems, lores, cinnamon rolls, <laughs> rings, necklaces, clocks, fancy boxes, a fucking human extinction device. The game's got stuff, and half of it glitters. Most of these items were used as unique puzzle objects that let you progress further into the game. At this point within their utilizations, gems and all that good shiny stuff were mostly followed up by an ooh. While I sat on my cousin's floor watching a 360 no-scope, the Elder. I might have the timeline wrong. Resident Evil 4 introduced a mercantile system that allowed you to buy or sell items from this guy in order to do stuff like this better. Whether it be attachments, healing items, weapons, upgrades, or uh, whatever's going on here. The merchant had it. This, of course, is only one facet of interacting with the merchant, wherein he would ask, What are you buying? He'd equally as frequently ask, What are you selling? Selling in Resident Evil 4 might have contributed to the collective drop in the USD's value, while every teenager on Earth quit their job, leading to the 2008 recession. Don't look up the dates. Hey, 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 don't look up the dates. You see, playing the game was half the game. You survivaled, you horrored, but you also went out of your way to combine random treasures you found with other treasures you found to make ultra treasures. These ultra treasures, which could sometimes take half the game to complete, tested your wherewithal. If health was on the decline, ammo was low, or you really felt a weapon upgrade could get you through an area better, you had to decide if you were going to hodl the coin weeb or sell off your incomplete treasures for a quick cash in. Spaghetti hands looking big. So okay, you saved all your loot, you waited until end game, and now you have an extreme quantity of money. What exactly was the point of all that? Dear viewer, 
If this was your first experience with Resident Evil 4, whether the original release or the recently released remake, we're gonna talk about that later, by the way. You likely just did whatever you had to do to survive. Healing when possible, cradling on ammo as it came, and selling treasures <laughs> spaghetti hands, as needed to afford valuable upgrades. It wasn't until you completed the game that the old adage, you never play a Resident Evil game once, really resonated in your brain. Okay, so Leon's looking dapper, Ashley's wearing fucking battle armor, there's a rocket launcher that shoots unlimited rounds in the store, and the merchant is even selling a renewed relationship with your distant father for the low, low price. So, wow, the game's opened up again and has made one thing abundantly clear. Hey, hey. Hey. Ah! You want the money? Is we rich? Look. We're not rich! Now, you know the real goal, get cash. And as you go through your future run, you realize something. Certain scenarios where enemies could either be avoided or killed off via cheese strats could actually be confronted head on to obtain even more loot. I'll never forget being 11 years old, yes, I'm old and dying slowly, and asking my mom to sit next to me in her room while the dulcet tones of ambient audio leak through my father's surround system, only to be decapitated by the chainsaw guy at max volume, thus leading to my lifespan being reduced by four years within the span of like two seconds. That, however, was my first playthrough. This time, I had good weapons and even better game awareness. So I made it my goal, focus on the chainsaw bad guy and see if I can take him down. Before I had ready access to the internet, I wasn't convinced it was even possible. And rumblings from cousins and playground friends sort of reinforced that. This guy is tough. I mean, his chainsaw blocks bullets. So I fought and I lost, fought and lost over and over and over again. Until, much to my surprise, the chainsaw guy was defeated. The game's iconic church bell rings out and Leon, where's everyone going, bingo? Jesus Christ, dude. Once the cutscene ends, I look over at the chainsaw guy and there I see it, a blue hue, indicating a sellable treasure item beaming towards me. I gleefully run over and what do I pick up? This thing is the size of a baseball. The thing's a goddamn chaos emerald, bro. I've expected Sonic to jump out from behind a tree and cheese grate my ass to steal this thing. I have expected every single Ganado to suddenly grow a giant mustache and antagonize me for the rest of the game. They did kind of do that anyway, though. As a former Sonic fan, not that one, not that one. That one. I died. This giant hunk of gemstone glistened in all its GameCube glory and was easily the best looking thing I'd ever seen graphically. I would stare and be appalled by this thing in complete disbelief. After my ritualistic stare down, I run to the nearest merchant to find out this thing is worth stacks. I remember thinking to myself, other enemies have to have equally as good, if not better loot, right? And I was right. Almost every enemy encounter in the game offers unique, and more often than not, glittery rewards for facing them head on. I forgot to write this in the script, but that's not including, you know, the uh, rewards that you're able to find passively in the environment as little glimmers. You would shoot down a bird's nest and maybe that will have a piece. Like I, what comes to mind is uh, the, the mask that you would get. You would find gemstones sort of embedded in the environment. So you needed to have good, you know, overall awareness of your environment and always be looking up, looking around, trying to find these treasures because it wasn't just attacking the enemies, it was actively exploring your environment. It was incentivized in the loop of you becoming more powerful. Okay, anyway, back to the script. But what exactly is it about this system that held such a profound effect on me? I suppose impact is in the eye of the beholder, but this game's mercantile system sort of put into motion a rich and immense love and passion for gemstones. While I haven't gone on as many as I'd like to say I have, I've done my fair share of gem mine tours, found myself bonding with other losers, I mean gem freaks such as myself both online and in person, and find myself trying and failing at finding content creators who cover this very niche aspect of gem hunting. Most gem oriented folk are the You have a rock collection? It's a mineral collection! type, and while I understand their passion, I've never really fallen into that hobby. As a result of Resident Evil 4 ascribing value and fun gameplay mechanics to these systems, I've kind of been lovingly dubbed as the gem guy within most of my friend groups. Now that's not exactly because I can't stop talking about it, but mostly because I turn into a bit of a pile of human soup whenever one is depicted in media of 
any kind. This means games, cosmetic shops, movies, TV shows, toys, or honestly anything you could likely conceive of. While I wouldn't call that life-altering stuff, I'd definitely say it's had a pretty profound impact on me and my sensibilities. So yes, viewer, while Resident Evil 4 had many features, many industry firsts, it truly was the silly upgrade and treasure system that had me hooked for life. While games such as Spyro the Dragon, Sonic the Hedgehog, or even that first Harry Potter movie began the rumblings, it wasn't until Resident Evil games that things got real. And not till Resident Evil 4 that I finally gave up the ghost and became a lifelong appreciator of the tacky garbage your grandmother wears on the daily. Speaking of tacky garbage, no, I'm joking. I appreciate Capcom's effort to expand and elaborate on the famed mercantile system, recently depicted in Resident Evil 8 Village. I find being able to upgrade your weapons based on your wherewithal and holding on to treasure to be highly compelling for this rock hound, and generally a great way to pace out rewards and power advancements. That said, it's not all perfect. Your ability to place gems in specific spots, and in particular combinations within treasures, single-handedly almost sent me into card arrest, and the utilization of spinels as a means of exclusive trade currency in the shop are really cool evolutions on the already awesome foundation that Capcom famed years before. Seriously, spinels were worth almost nothing, and by the end of the game, the pale pink gems felt like an absolute waste of design space. Now, that said, while this mix and match system is incredibly cool, there's only like six gems to mix and match, and they look like this or this. This. Now, this is odd to me, because just a few years prior, in Resident Evil 2 Remake, we got a gem that single-handedly convinced me that the Blood Diamond trade might be a worthwhile endeavor. Why is it that these gems look so flat and lifeless, when gems even from the original game depicted such bluster and richness and depth? The RE Engine, the framework and foundation of the recent Resident Evil titles since their seventh entry, does a remarkable job bringing items to life with astonishing levels of detail. Use of photogrammetry, a method of 3D capture and model design within their development pipeline results in stunning and near lifelike models that are rich in detail and luster. This is unbelievably true regarding metallic objects within Capcom's recent titles, epitomized in Resident Evil 4. I mean, the sheer detail and jaw-dropping shimmer and lighting effects are quite possibly the best I have ever seen in a Resident Evil title, and maybe even the best in the games industry. This is some seriously impressive stuff. However, I suspect the reliance on photogrammetry and other major production time-saving techniques could be the reason gems have been left looking so ugly and bare by comparison. Capturing a gem's shape through photogrammetry while possible could be seen as a waste of time, since geometrically speaking, while cut gemstones are complex in making look as they do in real life, a copy of Blender or any run-of-the-mill ordinary 3D modeling program and a little tinkering could get you to the general shape rather quickly. The real magic of depicting gems in a game such as Resident Evil, or any game for that matter, comes down to clever use of optical tricks, shader design, and other black magic that I won't even pretend I understand. It's about what's inside of the gem shape not the shape itself. And while photogrammetry can capture the most minuscule of microscopic detail and give you a usable shape, it doesn't do so well when it comes to what's optically supposed to be inside any given model. This is all complex mumbo jumbo as to say, getting the gems to look their best might have simply been a worthy thing to leave on the chopping block of design when factoring in the rest of the game's mechanics, design, and programming. I mean, who would really care if the gems were slightly dead? Me. Uh, it, me. Me. Gems, by their very nature, are minerals made from heat and pressure. They're like the Earth's kidney stone. They vary in optical effects, and even more so in price. I mean, good God in heaven. Resident Evil 4's original release on the GameCube had limited power, but was still able to give us visuals like this. I posit this.
The gem system introduced in Resident Evil 4 Remake is fantastic and should absolutely stay. But why aren't there more variety of gems? Why not a Plagas gem or Bloodstone gems? Perhaps gems that are ritualistic or scientific in nature. Why not strange crystallized gems that only come from fucking these guys? When I go out of my way to kill a tough enemy and the best reward I get is the same yellow diamond, she doesn't even fucking, it doesn't even, it doesn't look like a, who the fuck? I could get this if I traded three spinels at any given point in the game. These rewards are incredibly boring and serve to allow you to customize a handful of items throughout your playthrough. Half the fun of receiving strange drops from enemies was the fact you never knew what you were gonna get. Different areas had different gems and treasures and rewards, and different gems could potentially be a part of a larger treasure you still haven't found yet. It was charming, unique, and above all else, mouthwatering. Whether it be the cat's eyes you used for the beer stein, the triangular gems you used for the butterfly lamp, the slotted ornamental gems you used for the mask, or the amazing crown jewels obtained in the later sections of the game. While Remake has these items, they just aren't the same. The same old gems you get from the opening 10 minutes of the game can be used on these throwback treasures located towards the end of the game. This halts the sense of escalation and reward and takes away the genius of the gem combo system, making it come off like a convenience in design rather than an evolution of appeal. This is all nuanced stuff. And while I genuinely do enjoy Resident Evil 4 Remake quite a bit, I'd be a liar if I didn't say I didn't feel at least a little disappointed that the feature that inspired my rich love and nuanced appreciation of gemstones felt so neutered and cut down. Ultimately, Resident Evil 4 was the catalyst that inspired a major shift in my own understanding of the known universe, as well as the beings within it. It also made me like shiny shit and gems in any game I've ever played. For that, I owe Resident Evil 4 a great debt because if it wasn't for that one singular feature, I wouldn't have the eye I do now and the passion I share today for the little rocks that shine when the light hits them just right. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is my very first video, so I hope you found something to appreciate. But if you have any feedback or opinions of your own, I'd love to hear them down in the description below. A like and a subscribe are also absolutely appreciated. I stream almost every day on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash arcticus, and I've been going strong doing that for about a year. So if you'd like to let me know what you think about the video, or would generally just like to hang out with my community, they're seriously, seriously some of the sweetest people in the entire world, I'd love to have you guys over. I'm hoping to make more more videos in the coming months as topics and ideas come to mind. If there's a topic you'd like for me to cover, let me know down below. Thanks again, you guys. I'll catch y'all next time, and remember to stay golden. At this point within their utilizations, gems and all the good shiny stuff were mostly followed by an ooh while I sat on my Lord Moa. Lord Moa. It is a lot more.